Hello everyone, it's Sally's Take, and I'm sure that if you have social media or if you follow the news, you will have already heard of the Black Lives Matter movement by now and the protests that has been going on around the world. And I want to be a small part of the movement and bring awareness to this issue. So that's why this week's video is going to be the lessons we can take from a movie called The Hate You Give. So The Hate You Give is basically about this African-American teenage girl named Star who witnessed her best friend, who is also black, getting murdered by a white police. And the story arc is basically about Star finding her own voice as the only witness of the case and as a black teenage girl who goes to this fancy white school. Now I'm not going to spoil the movie, but I will definitely be touching on some main points that the film made so i think it's best if you already watch the film and maybe watch this video later as a recap but if you haven't watched the film or if you don't want to watch the film then i hope that this video maybe help educate you a little bit more on the black lives matter movement this film is adapted from an amazing young adult book written by Angie Thomas and I highly recommend you guys to go read it along with her other works as well because she's an amazing writer. But um, The Hey Do Give specifically is the book that opened my eyes and made me care about the Black Lives Matter movement in the first place. Because to me, I feel like I can read about what happens to black people as many times as I can in the news or in history. but. As a fair-skinned person, I will never know what it's like to be black 24-7 and in 2020. And I will never know what it's like to get judged or mistreated because of my appearance, at least not to the degree that black people get. And the book and the movie kind of put me into the perspective of a black teenage girl who witnessed her best friend get killed for nothing basically and at least I, it helped me empathize and care more about racial issues and I hope it does the same for you too because I have a bunch of lessons that I learned from watching this movie and I'm here to share it to you guys so let's go the first thing that I realized from watching The Hate You Give is how much privilege I have. And I feel like um, if you're not people of color, especially if you're not black, you have the privilege to kind of opt out of these conversations. I mean, I have done it for like the most part of my life. I didn't know how bad the racism was. And up until today, I can still choose to like not follow the news some days or to be like, uh, I don't feel like following what's going on because it's too much, it's too heavy, it's too serious. But black people don't really have that much luxury of being like, okay, I don't want to deal with it right now because it's their reality. They have to see it. Um, the Hate You Give kind of set the tone for it and opened with a nine-year-old star getting the talk from her dad about how to behave while coming in contact with the police. She is told to make her hands visible, do as the police say even if she didn't do anything wrong or maybe she did something wrong but her treatment shouldn't be that extreme. And she has to make herself seem as least threatful as possible. So not having to worry about your safety wherever you go out or being able to trust that the police will not harm you for your skin color is a privilege. The second point is understanding the problem, understanding what is injustice, what is racism, what is police brutality, both on the big scale and smaller scale. Big scale meaning like murder and smaller scale is like day to day stuff. And I know the protests sparked from George Floyd's murder in America, but the reason why the movement reached so many countries in the world is because racism doesn't only happen there. It is a global problem. In my country, it's in Asia. And on the surface, we don't seem like we have a problem with race, but we do. Oh, we do. We have 
a commercial for a skin lightening product, a skin lightening product, saying that you won't get a job if you have dark skin, which has gone viral and became very controversial and banned from many countries. And during the Black Lives Matter movement, we have black people in my country coming out and say that they were bullied or laughed at as a child and no adult stepped in to defend them. I mean, you don't really have to even be black. You can just have a darker complexion to your skin and you'll get bullied. And we have, I think, an English book and it was trying to define the word handsome and it has the face of a white man in it and when it comes to ugly they put a face of a black man in it and he has the expression of like anger or something like that which is so uh, racist yet not many people seem to think that we have prejudice against black people in our country so I think that understanding the problem sometimes mean acknowledging that you are part of the problem. You have been programmed to think that white is good, black is bad from like all the media that you consume. But when you know that it is wrong, it is your job now to change your actions and not repeat the same mistakes again and also share this knowledge to other people as well. Third is stop giving excuses. In The Hate You Give, we have Star's uncle, who is a police and also a black man. He gave the excuse to kind of justify Khalil's death that when the incident happened, it was dark at night and the officer only shot to protect himself. But when Star asked her uncle if he would have shot the person if they were white, he said he wouldn't and he would hesitate. But if it were a black person, he would have shot immediately. So it even goes to show that even people of color could discriminate against each other or let these racist behaviors slide. Now, um, the next argument I see a lot online, but I don't think I've seen it much in the film, um, but I'm going to bring it up anyway. It's the all lives matter excuse or that not all police are bad course like i all lives matter and not all police are bad but um black lives matter didn't say that it mattered more than other races or that it's the only race that matters but the movement was created because black lives are usually treated as if they don't matter and this is just to bring awareness to the issue the fourth point is really short and simple. It's basically just to check up on your black friends, partners, or family members if you have one, or even your favorite influencers. Um, I feel like especially in this time, just be there for them and ask them what you can do to help. Uh, in The Hate You Give, we have Chris, who is Star's boyfriend, and he would always ask her throughout the story how he can help, and he'd try to understand her and just be there for her. We've reached the fifth point, which is stop appropriating black culture for trends. This one, <laughs> you can see a lot, whether it be in your favorite local hip hop artist, a classmate, or K pop stars. If you're not black and you use black culture, you most likely get credit for looking cool or fashionable. But when black people do it, it seriously could harm their image. They could lose a job interview or be sent home from school just for expressing themselves. And when it comes to hair, sometimes they don't even have choices because these are the only hairstyles that work for their type of hair. And imagine if they say having straight hair goes against the school code. So what? Are you going to get a perm every now and then? Lose money on it and have some chemicals under your hair instead of just going naturally? It's so stupid. And there are so many detailed articles and videos on this topic already. So um, if you're interested to learn more, I'll be leaving some links down below too. Um, in the movie, we have Star explaining her to her white boyfriend, Chris, that she felt like she couldn't be herself in school because she does not want to be stereotyped as ghetto or hood. And then Kristen said something like, he doesn't judge people by their color. 
Just be yourself. Everyone is equal. And while that sounds very nice in theory, but we have to admit that in reality, even if you yourself see everyone as equal regardless of their color, the whole world doesn't agree with you. You can't tell a black person to just be themselves when the world is less likely to accept that part of them. Star can't get away with wearing black hairstyles and using slangs without being stereotyped in harmful ways, while the white kids in school would look cool for doing the exact same thing. The sixth point is genuinely care about the movement. I think this one is a given. It's pretty obvious that you shouldn't do it for fun, for the views, for a photo opportunity. Um, you should genuinely care about it and doing it just for the acceptance or relatability is probably no different from doing nothing at all. Um, in the movie, we have the white kids in Star School who decided to use Khalil's protest as an excuse to skip class when none of them truly care about the cause. So after class, Khalil was just another black guy who got shot by a police and none of them really came up to Star and asked if she was okay. I think you can tell if some influencers or brands are being genuine with the Black Lives Matter movement or they are just posting so they don't lose their followers. So choosing the people and brands you support is important as well. The seventh point is call out racism when you see it happening. Even if there isn't a black person there, you should say something about it. Now, I know that um, the clash of political views or morality can be an uncomfortable subject to approach, but if you're in a safe space, you should practice using your voice. The eighth point kind of go hand in hand with the seventh point, which is to listen when you are being called out as well, especially if you're called out by black people. You can't even see that you're acting racist, huh? Because I'm not. It's all our and us and Black Lives Matter, girl, until you clutch your purse when you're in the elevator with the black person. You don't need to use the N-word and use a fire hose on black people to be racist, Haley. We all make mistakes, unless like you're super perfect, but we can stop the cycle by actually listening to the voice of black people. But also don't wait around for a black for a black person to tell you from what is right from wrong. Um, you should be able to educate yourself on the subject matter if you have the access to it and um, read up on the history, the problems or the news. The ninth point is media will frame how you view things. The question during the investigation and the TV interview scenes in The Hate You Give shows that they were more focused on who Kalu was before he died. They tried to paint him as a bad person, so it would seem like what has been done to him is well deserved. And in the news report, both in the movie and in reality, they try to make the protesters seem violent, angry, or vulgar when in reality they could be just protesting peacefully. Last but not least, we have the importance of black representation in the media. We can't just portray them as criminal. Um, coming from the ninth point, media affects who you are, your opinions, your views on things. So if we can change the media, uh, we will probably be able to change a lot of people's minds. So that is it for the lessons I got from The Hate You Give. I'll be leaving some petitions, donations, and if you want to learn more, I'll be leaving links down below as well. Uh, just do as much as you can to help out. And yeah, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you soon.